Hello, this is Ben Baxter from Accent Software. Today's video is going to cover some of the great features within Dynamics NAV and job costing related to material requisitions. And this applies to people who run your typical MRP process where the system calculates for you the supply and demand of each item or component and suggests an order to you as well as to the people who have a job, have a custom bill of material for that job and decide to buy material either ad hoc or uh, in bulk for that specific job, pushing from the job to the, the purchaser or the planner. So in this case, we're going to look at it in two different ways. I will show both sides of the equation here. I'm gonna run it first in the MRP mentality just to show you that it can actually accomplish the same as pulling from a job. It just depends on the item parameters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my requisition worksheet and I'm going to run a process that's called calculate plan. And I already have my time horizon set. I'm going to run it unfiltered and I'm just going to let it chug through my items and make the suggestions to me. So here's a lot of suggestions that you do see items repeated and that's just because I used a very long time horizon. But some of them will be also for order reorder policies, meaning a one to one replenishment. So depending on the dates, the quantities, that sort of thing, I will get specific suggestions from the requisition worksheet in terms of what items to buy and when. Discussing these, I do have some that will be making a job. So these could be sub assemblies within a job or that I'm just selling and it's a finished good component. So a finished good product that I build and sell. So if I have a sales order in the system, it's gonna trigger a job to be created for that item to make it. So I can do it either way, whether it's a sub assembly or the finished good, this requisition worksheet will tell me you need to make a job for this or you need to create a purchase order for this. So depending on how the items are set up, it will make those different suggestions for me. If I scroll to the right, it's going to help tell me why it's making it. So in some cases, I'll have a job number listed. That means that this raw material for an order policy is being suggested because there is a job that needs it. So it has job demand and I will be creating a purchase because of that. Other uh, products in here will have a reference order number. So in this case, these are products that happen to be on a production order, so a different part of the system for manufacturing. I have other videos on that. So this is the typical MRP. It runs through, it looks at the supply and demand of each of the items, looks at the planning parameters that I have defined for the item in terms of either a reorder point and a reorder quantity, whether it's lot for lot and grouping my order demand over a specific time period. It could be an order policy where it creates one supply for every one source of demand and in whatever quantity that is for. However, I have it defined for each of these items, these are the suggestions the system is making. So very much an MRP process still within the job costing mentality. So even though I am running a traditional MRP, which a lot of people associate with a manufacturing type environment, a job coster has stock items that you want to keep on the shelves in certain quantities. This MRP worksheet is doing that same exact functionality, even though you're a job shop or a cost focused manufacturing plant. So either way, this works. Now these are suggestions. Uh, I'm not going to carry anything out yet. What I'm going to go ahead and do is delete this. So what I'm doing is I'm clearing out that worksheet, removed all those suggestions. It's not a big deal because I can go and calculate that plan again and have it make the exact same suggestions because I'm the only one in this system making any changes. But we're going to come back to this requisition worksheet. I want to show the other side of the equation. And I think within the job costing realm or industry, this is what a lot of people do. So they're going to come to their job. So we'll scroll through. I have a job in here for a generator repair and it has a bill of material. And I know that the job to date usage is blank on all of them. So we haven't bought or used any of these items. This is why I picked this job. So I have a bill of material. It has some outstanding quantity needed for these components. Okay, now some of them I will have in stock and some I won't. Now, if you're in the typical job costing market, then it means that you're probably not stocking these components. You're buying everything for a job 
every time you have a new job. Now I have demo data in here so I have quantities on hand for some of these. The process I'm about to run ignores all that. Basically I'm telling the system take the expected need, the remaining need for these components that I've defined on my bill of material and I'm going to do what's called autofill the quantity to requisition. Now I just have a small sample set here of about eight items. If I had a list of 500 bill of material items, I would want a process that goes through and fills in this column for me. All I'm doing when I run that process is moving my outstanding quantity to my quantity to requisition. I'm preparing to do the requisition process. I haven't moved anything to my purchaser. I haven't told them to buy anything yet. I've simply filled in this quantity so that I can now make adjustments. Maybe on this uh, lot for lot type item, I want to come in and just do 30 of the 50 that are going to be needed. So I can make adjustments here before I push it out. If I have some that are date oriented, I can also filter on that when I'm running the autofill. But whatever I define here in the quantity to requisition is what I'm going to push over to my purchasing agent. I'm going to tell them, hey, I need to buy these products for this job. So I'm going to say create requisitions. It's going to confirm it and it's going to send it. Okay. So now I have a quantity on requisition. If I go back to my requisition worksheet, we now have lines back in here. Remember I deleted this worksheet out? Now I've pushed everything from that job to the requisition worksheet. But the best part about it is it's kept the job number on there for me. I've forced the system to say that these items are being bought for that job. A really important part of job costing is making sure that every cost element is allocated correctly to the job. In this case, when I'm pushing from the job to my purchasing agent, I'm telling them exactly which job these materials are going to be costed for. So when I create my PO, that job number will be on there. When I receive my items in, those costs are going to flow right through to my job. I'm never going to miss the cost when I do it this way. And that's why a lot of job costing companies do this push from the job to the purchasing agent to say, please buy this material. My PM, my project manager is going to come in and say, it's time. I need to buy some material, push it over to the planner. The planner can then work with the vendors to find the best price and all of that. But it's already in the worksheet for them to start making their calls and working through the, the purchasing process. At this point, I could just simply uh, carry out the action, create the purchase orders, and send them out the door. If I'm the purchasing agent, obviously there's more to do with calling the vendors, making sure they can get it to me when I need it, those sort of things. But if I've planned far enough in advance, then I'm good to go to carry these out and create those POs. So that's the process here. Again, two sides of it on the material requisition. One is doing it in the typical MRP fashion where the system looks at your supply and demand and suggests for you the creation of purchase orders and requisitions of product. The second is the more job costing mentality of here's my job, here's the bill of material I've planned for the job go ahead and buy it when I say. So there's a process in place where a project manager or somebody is authorizing the purchase and they're pushing those purchases over to the planning agent. Now I could run it mixed mode. It all depends on the setup of each individual item. One of the greatest parts of Dynamics in AV is that your planning process, your MRP, your parameters that define when and why you buy product is on an item by item basis. There's a lot of flexibility in the system, a lot of great tools available for this and really streamlines and helps make the purchasing process an efficient and easy to manage cycle. I hope that gives you some really good information. I hope that gets you excited about the great capabilities that are out there. Again, we're trying to keep this job costing focused. I do have a recording on our channel about the production side of it, the manufacturing, very repetitive product side. So go and check out that video if that applies more to your type of business. But if you're a job coster, these are great tools for you. And I hope to continue the conversation with you whenever you're done watching our video. So I appreciate it. Make sure you like and subscribe to our channel if you like this content. Feel free to share it with your colleagues and friends so that they know it's out there and, and can get use of the information as well. As always, I appreciate your time and I'll talk to you soon.